Welcome back to another episode of D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is R.C., and I'm here with Larry Becker. What's going on? Hey, R.C., good to see you, man. Good to see you again. Good to be back. I've been been, keeping busy. Yeah, I've been on the road a little bit and doing some uh, uh, video reviews of camera products for B&H. Nice. Hope we have a chance to talk about some of that stuff in the near future. Very, very cool. How about you? uh, Shooting, working, (laughs) writing, all sorts of different things. Trying to keep up with the flood of stuff that's happening out there on the Internet. There's a lot. With uh, cameras and Nikons and D4s and D800s. Heard of that? So there's there's the D800 is out in case you you don't know, right? This new flagship camera, and I got to show you this one website. Take a look at cmphotography.com/blog. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in here for you so you can see it. cmphotography.com/blog. That's Cliff Mountner. Cliff Mountner is one of the few people that's actually out there shooting the new D800 camera. It's phenomenal. It's one of those things where before you would have, uh, you know, D4, D700, D3X. Right. They took the megapixel of the higher end D3X camera and turned it into the small body. So now you have this 36 megapixel camera that does 1080 video, does all of these kinds of things. And uh, the camera's great. Don't want to turn this into a D800 episode, but what happened was there was this giant controversy that talked about, well, is it medium format? Is it not medium format? Right. Uh, is it the quality of a medium format? And all these people kept kind of going back and forth about that. And what Cliff did is he said, listen, let me just show you the pictures that I was able to do with this. Sure. And just kind of showed, you know, 100% crops and showed, you know, a lot of the times when things like this come out, there's a lot of conspiracy talk. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, you know, they never talked about noise. They never talked about, you know, 1600. They never talked about this. Right. And he said, look, this is the deal. Look at the entire thing. And he just shot, shot by shot by shot by shot. And it kind of alleviated a lot of people's concerns as to what this camera can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. And... The part that I thought that was great about that is it's not a medium format camera. I don't think it's supposed to be. And, and the, the people who love medium format, you're okay. You can totally <laughs> dig medium format. It's fine. This is a 36 megapixel camera. For somebody who wants a really, really, really big file to get little pictures out of or to get big files at $3,000, which is, I think, what yeah. they said, they said 29, 29 and something. Yeah. That's a great price. So uh, if you want to take a look at this, go over here to Cliff Mountner's website. And in his blog, he has a section where he talks about all of this kind of stuff. So in here, he'll go through what the shots look like, how it focuses. He'll go through, this is what this shot looks like at 800 ISO. Look at how this looks. And I always gauge megapixels Mm -hmm. by what uh, eyelashes. I'm always looking at eyelashes. And I'm like, can you see this? What does it look like in this one section? I was testing some lenses this week and doing that exact same thing. It's all about eyelashes. So, And then this is what it looks like at 3200. So he does a really, really good comparison. And he, he zooms in and he shows some stuff. Mm-hmm. Just to be able to take a look at it. So I like I like people that kind of take things out and go, look, let's forget about the specs that are in the marketing brochure. Let me show you what it looks like on the road. Cliff is one of those guys that I tend to go to over and over again for that kind of stuff. So make sure you take a look at his stuff. Great guy. Thanks, RC. Great guy yeah. and a great trainer and uh, a good friend. I actually had to call yeah. him for help on a, an article I was writing recently, and he was just a great uh, wealth of knowledge. Yep. To he, so help that's me out our an awful lot. In the news segment, <laughs> now you have a tip on light painting, though. Yeah, um, actually, I went out last night and uh, did a little bit of light painting, and I just want to give you some tips and show you some experimental photography. But first, I want to tell you how to set up your light painting. Ver- now, there's all different t- types of light painting. There's light painting where you point a light or a flashlight of some sort, some light source, back at the camera and you paint words in the air and that kind of stuff. That's not what I did. What I did was I went out to um, a park in town where I live and I went out to this pavilion and I started to shoot at night and paint the building. And I got some of those pictures and I'm not bringing them to show you because the subtlety was too small to actually notice here on the show. But I did shoot my car and I want to tell you first how to set up to do a light painting, at least what I did last night. Um, Set up on a tripod, obviously, and plan on uh, a 20 second, 30 second, 40 second exposure. I was doing 20 second exposures typically. Now, in order to be in very low to no light and still be able to focus, what I did was I pointed a flashlight at my subject, and then I did my autofocus, and then I flipped off the autofocus on the lens. So I got my focus to begin with, 
then I just left it there so that I, uh, that would work. And then I also did uh, everything in manual, just uh, manual exposure. Um, I set my I, uh, ISO down to 100 and did a 20 second exposure. Now, let me show you what uh, I have to start with. This image of my car um, actually turned out a little bit better than the ones of the building, so I used the ones of the car to, to demo what I did. This is a reference photo. There is no extra light, so what you see is a little bit of, um, just a little bit of ambient light coming from the sky, and uh, the little orange there on the front is a street light that's uh, a couple dozen yards away. Now, this light, I went off to the side, I did the same 20 second exposure, but I went off to the side and I painted the car with uh, a white LED flashlight, and um, it just kind of stood off camera. And then this one I stood more toward the front of the, uh, the car and painted it. And then I decided to start to get creative. And I started walking around the vehicle and painting different parts and just kind of splashing light. And I'm actually walking through the frame. You don't see me because I'm in dark clothes and I only stay there for uh, less than a second where I walk across the frame. But these are, you know, the light itself is what the uh, image sensor is capturing. It's not capturing me walking across in front of the car. And so uh, I just painted different aspects of the car. And one problem that I had was that um, the LCD on the back of my camera is too good. It's actually showing me that I got a brighter exposure and more exposure than I actually did. So this is one of those kinds of things you have to experiment with a little bit. And in pitch black, your LCD is actually going to show you probably a brighter exposure than you actually got. Now, if you go back to my images, I want to show you one more. And uh, not this one, the next one after this. And that was kind of a cool one. But the, OK, it's the next one. This one. All right, now, come back to me, and I want to show you which lights I used. That last image that you saw, I used this light. This is a million candle power rechargeable handheld spotlight. And I thought, this is going to be much brighter than this light. It's not. This light actually gave you uh, most of the pictures that I showed you, those really bright white images. This is a 320 lumen police tactical flashlight. They sell for about 90 bucks, uh, 80 to 90 bucks on Amazon. This particular one is the Olight M20 Warrior. And uh, it goes 320 lumens. It also has a half brightness down at 110 lumens. It also has, and I love this, it has a five lumen setting. So you don't lose your night vision if you're working in your camera bag. Um, I set mine on five lumens just to kind of work on the camera, look at the settings on the, and the controls and things on the back of my camera. And then I pump it up to the, the full brightness. And it's got a, a lot of stuff for the police, you know, like the, the tactical bezel on the front. And um, it's just a cool light. So it's from Olight. It, they aren't paying me to say this. They didn't send it to me. I had to buy it myself. But it is a great light. It's actually brighter than this one. Now, one of the reasons that I really like it is the reflector inside, it's an orange peel reflector. So it really smoothed out the beam. If you want the beam, though, to go a little bit further, than this one, you can actually buy a replacement reflector that's really smooth and shiny. And the, the beam will actually be a little crispier, but it'll go further. It's just not quite as smooth. I prefer this one, but if you want the beam to go a little bit further, you can get the optional replacement reflector. So that's my tip. Try it out. It's, it's a fun experiment to do. Long time on the... Uh, it feels uh, good. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And it's also got, it's got a strobe mode. So it's for police tactical, and you can blind people at night. It's really kind of. I have always wondered about those ridges. Like, do cops actually run well, around? Actually, and go, ah. no, no, <laughs> no. You actually hold it like this when you're going into some place, oh. and and so it's it's supposedly a weapon like this. But that's removable. I leave oh. it on so that if I accidentally leave the light on sitting on a table, I can actually see the beam coming oh. out the side. So I leave that. Uh, not that I'm actually going to fend off anybody at night with this thing. I just saw like a weird broom spear. Kind of like, <laughs> but that's and then, just mean. And this is just kind of mean to do that to people. Okay. So it's just, it's a tactical strobe that they use when they're breaking into houses. Legally, nice. of course. So anyway. So that's it. Very cool way to go. Don't have to worry about getting something like a million candle power light. The light's going to be orange. This is nice bright white light. Mm -hmm. And uh, multiple settings worked out pretty cool. Very, very cool. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we want to talk to you about uh, Jack Rizniki's custom copyright stuff. I want to show you a quick tip on uh, temperature and a lot more stuff. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. This is Syl Arena, and I am proud to say that I'm a Canonista. 
If you shoot Canon and you're looking to learn how to use Canon speed lights, I want you to check out my classes on kelbytraining.com. I'll show you what the buttons and dials do. How do you take your speed light off camera and why should you? What are modifiers? What modifiers would you use if you were a novice? What do you do with an umbrella aside from protect yourself from the rain? What's ETTL? Why should you shoot in manual? What's a master? And what's a slave? How do you get them to talk to each other? What the heck is high speed sync? A lot of people have said Canon speed lights don't do the job that other speed lights will do. I'm sure after watching my courses, you'll completely disagree. Back, we are still part way through the show, and we've got to get to your tip. And we'll do that after we visit with this guy who is a copyright guru, Jack Resnicki. Take a look. Hey guys, thanks for having me here on D-Town. Appreciate it. My name is Jack Resnicki, for those that don't know me, and I'm here to talk about copyright, and specifically copyright registration. Um, it's very, very important that you register your copyright. As a lot of photographers know, you own the copyright from the moment you take the picture. As soon as you snap the shutter, you own that uh, copyright on that image. The trouble is, it's not worth much without the registration. You have to register it at the Copyright Office, which is www.copyright.gov.gov. Copyright.com is a site that tries to sell you something. But you get a lot of benefits from registration. Uh, the biggest one is you can't sue anybody without the registration. That's the key to the courthouse. If you don't have a registration in hand and you tell somebody, you ripped me off, you infringed my picture, you ran it in all these places and I'm gonna sue you, if they ask, is it registered, and you say no, you're really in a lot of trouble at that point. There's very little you can do. You still can go after them, but you will still have to get the registration before you do anything. And if it's not registered before the infringement, you lose a lot of things in court, such as statutory damages. Uh, so instead of getting actual damages, which won't cover your costs, uh, you can get statutory damages, which run well into six figures, um, and that usually scares everybody. That and the fact that you can collect lawyer fees, that really scares people. And so a lot of copyright cases are settled, but only after the other side finds out that you've registered the image. And registration is just $35. It's not expensive. It's $35 for each application. I recently registered 6,000 images uh, on a trip I recently took, and it's $35. As a commercial photographer for me, it's the cost of doing business. It's very simple. Uh, it's, it's like putting on seat belts as you get into a car. It's insurance on your images. I don't want to be infringed, but if I am, I'm protected. Now you can get step by step how to register um, uh, your images with the Copyright Office at copyright.gov, um, but it is a little difficult to follow because the site was built by the lowest bid, I believe. Um, we also have information on Kelby Training. Uh, me and intellectual property lawyer Ed Greenberg have uh, a step-by-step -step how to register your images, including some little quirks uh, in some of the screens. Um, and we also have it in our book, uh, The Copyright um, Photographer's Survival Manual, uh, and you can find that at uh, any bookstore or on Amazon. Uh, but do any which way you do find out how to do it, do register your work. It's the most important thing you can do to protect your images. I told you Jack was great. He is absolutely Whatever. just among the best at one of the, and in fact, We've got a DVD oh. of some of that expertise we're giving away this show. That's very, very cool. That'll be a great thing to give away. Yeah. Now, you have a tip in Lightroom about color, color temperature? That's right, color temperature. But before we do any of that stuff, it's important for you to know that a lot of this stuff would not be possible unless we brought Calby training to you as well. So if you want to be able to take a look at all of the best photography training that's out there in one spot, quick, direct to the point, from Masters, from Maisel to McNally, to Scott Kelby, to Larry Becker, Cliff to Cliff Mountner, Calvin Hollywood, everybody that's there in one spot at KelbyTraining.com. Make sure you take a look at them. It's going to be something that's well worth your time. Now, take a look at this. In Lightroom, I have this one shot. I had to do a band cover yesterday. 
So basically, this band that I've shot before, a band called uh, Sister Kill Cycle, and they wanted to shoot in this one area, and I had no idea that is about cool any of this stuff. And what I wanted to be able to do is set up a, a really, really moody shoot. So we walked into this spot, and this right here, we have a couple of work lamps kind of set up here. Mm -hmm. We fired off a flash, and the flash here, this right here on this side, you probably can't see it, but it's a Westcott. Uh, it's a Westcott uh, seven foot. Okay, umbrella. wow. So it's a huge umbrella to yeah. be able to throw a whole bunch of light into this one spot. Now, this looks okay. But what happens is, when I take a look at the mood of the shoot, and that's why I don't necessarily want to talk about, I don't necessarily want to talk about, you know, white, white balance in terms of this is tungsten, this is, you know, this is uh, incandescent, this mm -hmm. is it, because there, there are charts and there's classes and there's time for all of that. But what I do want to talk about is when you, do, when you go into night photography, the very basic thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're shooting at night and you want to be able to create a different kind of a mood, what I tend to do is I tell people, use a smaller number. Right? Rather than using a specific white balance setting, go into your customized settings, and usually it's like you know cloudy, tungsten, incandescent, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then you'll see one that's called K for Kelvin. Take your dial, and once you get it on K for Kelvin, take your dial and sh bring it down. Lower, 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 lower. Right? The smaller the number, the cooler it's going to look. So if you were doing this, take a look right here, you can do this obviously inside of Lightroom. Mm -hmm. But if you take this temperature and you drag it over to the left, the lower the number, the lower the number, the lower the number, the lower the number. Look what's happening to the scene. It's getting cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler. Now, you could do that in Lightroom. The problem that, ha the, the problem that I run into is when you need to be able to kind of mix back in some color, mm -hmm. right? So what'll happen here is I'll say, all right, well, I want this to be one color, but I want the faces to be something that's very, very different. How do you mix all of the stuff back in? Now. To do that, what I'll do on the field is uh, I'll use gels. We'll talk about that later. But the key here is drop that number to be able to drop the color. Now, why do you care about this stuff when you're on the field? I care about it because it's yet another tool to be able to make your talent feel better about what it is that they're doing. Remember, you're out there to shoot a person. And that person has no idea as to what you're doing from a Photoshop standpoint has no idea what you're doing from a post-processing standpoint. So when you're shooting them, they, you can show them a nice picture, but then it's like, uh, well, you know, you know what's gonna look great. This is gonna look really good in Photoshop once I'm done. That doesn't inspire a lot of right. confidence. That's right. You know, and, and here you have people that are gonna be dressed up. One of the guys looks like a dead ringer from Marilyn Manson. He's not gonna sit there and go, oh, okay, here, let me just do this crazy look because I think in Photoshop it's gonna work later. So what I did is I dropped the temperature myself. I threw in some secondary lights. Here we have Rob Baynard kind of hanging out. We threw a secondary light back here for another gel. By playing with these temperatures at the location, I can get a general mood where I can show this to the client and I can say, look, when you guys stand right there, this is exactly what it's going to look like. No post, mm -hmm. no nothing. This is what you're going to see. This is uh, my buddy Rob. Now, he turned around and he wanted to pose for me. We also got another person for a close-up. I had him pull, and that's your final shot. Very cool. So here is this person who's going to trust doing something with you, you'd much rather, and, and again, this is obviously a color tip, but it's also a managing people tip. By dropping my color exposure, by using a couple of different gels on location, I'm able to go like this. Take a look. Yeah, you're doing right you're here. doing so much more in the camera. Yeah, I go, look at this is exactly what I want you to look like. When they see that and they go, dude, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Not only does it establish confidence on you, but it also makes, it takes the person to want to animate more to be able to get what they want to be able to do. So at the end of the day, you want a really, really great shot. You do that by offering a great shot right at the location as fast as you can. It's a cool, cool, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> That's a cool idea, RC. So, and I, and I, I think that, uh, uh, 
I love how Joe McNally works with gels on location and seeing just the taste of what you did with gels. I think that's going to be a future episode of Detail because the, mm -hmm. the gel thing, it, there's really a lot to that. And so controlling color temperature is one thing, but then introducing uh, artistic elements throughout your image and painting certain things with light in a particular flavor. I mean, you, you've done some really cool stuff. Thanks, man. Thank you very, very much. Makes, me, makes me want to buy the album. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we have a website we want you to take a look at where we've got a contest. Stick around. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. I'm a commercial advertising photographer. I've been doing this for over 35 years. I'm here at Kelby Training to teach you guys how I do my composites. I start in the studio, we take a subject, put it on a white sweep, shoot uh, with uh, my three edge gritty little lighting techniques, then we go in the field, we shoot some HDR backgrounds, and putting it all together in Photoshop and making it one amazing killer image. If you're interested in this kind of compositing, come check out my classes. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I wanted to uh, mention that Photoshop World is coming up, and uh, the 17th is the last day of the early bird special. The other specials have to do with hotels. So if you're even thinking about going to Photoshop World, because it's in a new place this time, it's going to be in Washington, D.C., uh, late March, 23, 4, 5, 6, something like that. I think the 23rd is pre-conference day. If you're even thinking about going, you want to get in on the hotel deals. And there are two or three hotels. Ho we normally have one big host hotel. We couldn't do that this time because there are so many people and uh, had to break it up into multiple hotels. Get all the details at photoshopworld.com and make sure you sign up and he'll be there I'll be there it's gonna be a great crowd some of the best Photoshop and photography trainers on the planet in one place in Washington DC okay we got a contest we're gonna give, give away some cool stuff and uh, we got a photographer to mention let's do the photographer first his name is Jeff Miller now I found this guy on the NAP member website and I want to show you his images he does these really striking he does HDR work but he also does the black and whites and I really like his black and whites um, and that's kind of why I wanted to show you guys so feel free to swing by we've got a link there it's kel.by slash Jeff Miller and that'll take you to his NAP member portfolio he's got some pretty cool stuff I like his black and white you might be inspired by his color work as well, but uh, swing by there and have a look. Nice. Very, very cool. Now, remember, in order for you to win one of these prizes, you need to go to kelbytv.com forward slash dtowntv. Go to this episode, go all the way to the bottom and leave a comment. Whatever comment you want, right? Say hi, give us a show idea, anything that you want to do. That's how we're going to watch this. You could be watching this on Google+, Plus. you could be watching this on YouTube, you mm -hmm. could be watching this from a bunch of different places, but it's important to note that we can only pick from one spot. Go to kelbytv.com forward slash dtowntv, find the episode, leave a comment. Yeah, and no matter what your comment is, we just pick somebody at random, and you'll win one of these two things. This is the Expo Disc, speaking of uh, setting color balance, Expo Disc for setting color balance on your camera. And this is the Photographer's Legal Guide. It's a two-disc set with uh, Jack Resnicki and Ed Greenberg, a great set. It's got um, the language that we use for model releases, seven different versions of model releases in here, and then also a whole bunch of copyright information. So we'll give one person person this and one person this comments made at random and even if you say something really really nice about RC that doesn't increase your chances of winning no it but, is not but it would be a good thing to do because he's a nice guy <laughs> all right guys that's it for this episode RC it's been a pleasure it's been a blast see it's you again next time take care